Hey, this video is going to be all about the Thomas Nelson King James Version Canterbury. I mean, Sovereign Collection. Yeah, that's right. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back, and I'm glad you've joined me for this review. I have a lot of strong opinions about the King James Version Sovereign Collection editions from Thomas Nelson and how they are not necessarily a competitor for the Schuyler Canterbury, but they're really more of a complimentary edition. Before we get into the edition and the text layout, uh, I want to go over this packaging. This Sovereign Collection edition comes in this great clamshell box, and it's really sturdy. This is the personal size reference edition of the King James Sovereign Collection. And on the back, you can see a lot of the features. Uh, there are a few things that distinguish it from the Canterbury. And I really want to point out two, especially. This is Words of Christ in red. That's one. And then also it is a nine and a half point font. So the Canterbury itself, this is the Canterbury full size. It is an 11 point font. And the personal size Canterbury is an eight and a half point font. And that's why I feel that this personal size King James Sovereign Collection at nine and a half point font is really a complimentary edition, kind of a halfway in between the full size Canterbury and the personal size Canterbury from Skylar. Now for the exterior cover, I'm not exactly sure what this exterior leather is. Uh, I'm sure it's a calf skin or a cowhide of some sort. Uh, that's pretty affordable. It does have raised ribs on the spine as well as some really decorative uh, ornamentation on the spine and you also have Holy Bible on the cover. The leather itself feels, I mean, okay. The, the retail on this edition is $99. So you're gonna probably buy these around 60 bucks, uh, maybe less, maybe a little bit more. Uh, so for that amount of money, that's really great value for, the, for what you're getting. When we open this edition up, we can see it is edge lined. That is a huge benefit. The liner is a synthetic material. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's synthetic. You can see this small fold over around the edge, as well as a perimeter stitching to kind of help hold that edge secure. Here's our publication page, Holy Bible King James Version KJV Sovereign Collection. That's really cool. It's 2020 printing from China. All right, this does show that this is the Thomas Nelson KJV typeface, that is the comfort print typeface, as indicated on the box here. That's the, the uh, KJV comfort print. And I really like this KJV comfort print. It reminds me of older Bibles, very much older Bibles, like it has a throwback font that's just really appealing. All right, so I've opened this edition to Psalm 10, 12 range, and I wanna show you why this Bible is being compared to the Canterbury. All right, so on your right is the Canterbury and on your left is the personal size reference Sovereign Collection. Uh, like I said, this is a nine and a half point font. This is an 11, so text size aside, um, that's the difference. But you can see this drop cap that's added at the beginning of each chapter. That was unique to the Canterbury. And I couldn't name many other Bibles that are being produced today that were doing that other than the Canterbury. And as you can see, not only the drop caps were uh, imitated, you have the reference sections in the bottom that were imitated as well. But Thomas Nelson and Zondervan have been doing this already. They've been using this layout with the uh, references at the bottom of the page for a long time. Now you can see in the Psalms is a single column where when you turn to the text is a double column. That's the exact same for the Canterbury. Uh, they do the same thing. They have their poetry sections in single column and they have the rest of the text in double column. Uh, it's also line matched. So is the personal size reference edition of the Sovereign Collection. You can tell that the paper's a little bit wider, which I actually like and I appreciate with this uh, Sovereign Collection edition. I also like the red letter that Thomas Nelson uses. I'm really digging this. Now I do prefer the font used by Schuyler in their Canterbury. There's a little more space between the letters. They're not quite so crowded together. Uh, the readability on the personal size reference is great. So I'm not really complaining about that. I just really like the flow and the comfortable 
uh, reading experience from the Canterbury because of that space. While I have the Canterbury open as well as the personal size reference sovereign collection, I wanted to show you guys the red letter, obviously. Um, in John 6, you can see it's mostly red letter. Uh, Thomas Nelson does a fantastic job with the red letter. I love the red letter. And uh, there is no red letter in the Canterbury. So that's, that's a big pro for me on the Sovereign Collection. I love red letter. I think it's really classic. It's really nostalgic. It makes me feel a lot of awesome things and remember some great memories when I'm reading from this really throwback font in red letter in the King James. It, it's just really great. So let's put away this Canterbury and we'll focus the rest of our time on this Sovereign Collection edition. Like I said before, this is a two column format that's line matched as you can see, it has a dual color printing with that dark crimson red color that I love so much from Thomas Nelson, as well as an extensive suite of references and translator notes at the bottom of the page. Another cool feature about this Bible is it has book introductions as well. And that'll include the dual color printing with the drop cap, the things that really make this edition uh, stand out. Uh, I love the book introductions to give us context and some framework for what we're about to read. Uh, so I can't emphasize enough how good that is to have in this edition. You can also see you have two of these double side satin ribbons. And in this edition, there's a gold and a black. They're ribbons. They're good ribbons. I'm glad that they use these thick ribbons rather than some little thin puny ribbons. That's great. One thing I would have loved to have seen was a little bit of an art gilt. And this has kind of like a brown, but I think that comes more from the gilding itself. Uh, but that's okay. I'm really not like completely upset about that. I really love this gilding on the page edges. It's like a satin finish. I'm hoping you can see that from the camera there. Uh, it's not overly glossy. So I, I don't know if it'll hold up really well to smudges or scratches, uh, but I know that the ultra glossy uh, gilding tend to just show everything. Again, I'll point out this is a edge line construction for $100 retail, $60, $70, which you can probably buy it uh, when they're on sale, are lower. So you have a Smith's on construction of the text block and an edge line construction of the binding. Uh, really, it's the best you could hope to get at that price point. And at a nine and a half point font, it fits right there in between the personal size Canterbury and the full size Canterbury as kind of a complimentary addition. And especially at that price point of $100 retail or $60, $70 when it's on sale, you're not really competing for the same customers. I hope people understand that. Uh, Thomas Nelson using this layout and using those drop caps, using the same reference kind of layout, to me it's a sign of respect and great business sense to use this layout with drop caps. It just makes sense to see how successful the Canterbury was and is, and to uh, provide something that the Canterbury line doesn't, and that's the nine and a half point font. Now, as far as study helps, this edition has a few. So at the end of Revelation 22, you come to the miracles of Jesus, the parables of Jesus. You have a one year reading plan. You also have a concordance. And I love that at the start of each alphabetical letter you have that drop cap that's really cool i just i like that the word you're looking for would be in all caps in this red this beautiful red color and then all of the references uh, below that will be indented over and easy to find it's just a really great easy to navigate concordance at the end of the concordance you come to a note regarding the type which is the cover print king james version typeface uh, and it's developed by 2K Denmark. And then we have these maps that are on glossy cardstock that I can't stand, so I want to just zip right through those and not talk about those. On the back of the cover, you have the ISBN imprinted really small on the back, and I really wish they would stop doing this. I had talked to a few people from Thomas Nelson and Zondervan. They basically said it's unavoidable for them and their logistics. They have to do this but I cannot wait. There'll be a day when they don't have to, I hope. And it's just an, it's just an ugly serial number on the back of your Bible. So uh, I really wish that wasn't there. But all in all, folks, this Bible is 
fantastic. It really is. It really fits right in that uh, missing area that Skylar doesn't really hit. Skylar has a wide margin. They have their full size 11 point font and they have their personal size the eight and a half point font that's a lot smaller. Creating editions that are similar to Skylar that fit in a area where they don't produce is quite frankly, pretty genius. It's a great addition and it's smart. So that'll be it for the review of the personal size reference. King James Sovereign Collection Edition from Thomas Nelson. Well done, Philip. All you good folks at Thomas Nelson, I think you did a bang up job on this edition. And if you found this video helpful or enjoyable, hit that like button. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike twice. Do that for me, I appreciate that. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing and click that notification bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. Thanks again for watching, take care. God bless.